Hello everybody and welcome back to some more World of Tanks PlayStation 4. Today we have an E75 fest for you. That's right, an E75, not an E25 as I might have said in the previous video. Hopefully you guys know enough about those two tanks by now that you're able to spot the minor differences between the two and not be too confused by my misidentification. Anyway, this is the E75. We're on mines. There's no RT, and we're going to charge up here. I think we're top tier. Um, well, I was going to dive right up onto the top of the hill, but uh, kind of. Uh, well, that happened. That guy suddenly popped up. Did not expect a T10 to be over there. It's a bit of a crazy place for him to get to, and he got there very quickly as well. Uh, so that kind of foiled my plan. But um, we take a bit of a battering quite early on in this round, but it's a good round nonetheless, so I'm going to bring it to you. The Liberty showing his turret. I don't know why he's sitting there. It's going to do him no good at all, because he's got no turret armor, or at least not enough to be uh, sitting there and trying that technique out. And the T-10's trying to hit us in the sides. So I wanted to bring you some E75 gameplay. I've got three awesome games I had in the... Uh, with This is with the top turret, but not the top gun. So with the... What is it? The 105 gun. As you can tell by the reload and the damage it's putting out. And I had, I had such a good session, such a good session the other day. I sat there, I probably played, I don't know, four hours maybe in total, maybe a little bit more on and off. Um, and I managed to do about, I think that's probably about 25 or so games. Did 40,000 XP on my E75 to unlock the top gun, which I just unlocked. Um, and in that, on that same day, I managed to have three very good rounds or three rounds that were good enough to bring to you guys you know they're not live commentary but they're just games that i saved when i was chilling out and grinding um and sitting there playing on the projector it was glorious in my nice comfy chair it was a lovely way to while away a sunday afternoon and nice when you get some good replays originally i was going to spread those replays out i was going to give you maybe a couple and then one on its own and spread them out over a couple of weeks you know do the youtube youtube thing um, but then I unlocked the Top Gun, and on my second game I had an absolutely outrageous game, uh, which you might have seen me tweet the the battle results for, so I really want to bring you that one. So instead, I'm going to give you all three of the good 105 games in one video, which is what you're watching now. Unless I change my mind in the next 21 minutes or so of recording. But I decided to lump, lump these three 75 games in, and you can just get a a look at what can happen in an E75 that's not even fully upgraded. So you see, we went and sat in the middle there. We were able to, we took a lot of hits early on from that guy who was sitting at the side, side of the T10. But once we dealt with him, we were pretty much untouchable there. Um, and it looked like we were about to get flanked pretty badly. Well, we definitely were. So I decided to spin round, get some shots on these guys. Definitely the right thing to do because getting shot in the butt isn't much fun. Get a nice hit into him. 704, one of the more dangerous tanks in their team, but don't know what he's doing here. Just crazy maneuver, crazy maneuver. Gets cracked, gets hit, and will no doubt be finished off in no time at all. There he goes. So normally I wouldn't. The middle, it's always good to get the hill on mines. None of our teams actually got up there yet. Uh, that is kind of where I was heading. Fighting in this middle bit normally doesn't work out too well and when you've got a big tough heavily armored tank and it feels like a fun fight to have here normally you just get bombed by artillery and that's kind of um takes away the fun of it but thankfully no artillery so we were able to sit there in the middle and once we got rid of that guy with the side shots there wasn't a huge amount they could do to us even with that waffle at the back wasn't much he could do uh, and now we're kind of mopping up and we've moved onto the hill we haven't got many hit points left, but the E75, it's got so much armor. It's one of those tanks where when, I've, when I'm when i on low hit points, I, it doesn't worry me as much as other tanks. It doesn't make me think, oh shit, a quick encounter and I could be dead. It just, you just keep going. Like, this hammer is of no concern. He's got no chance of really doing much to me. Uh, we managed to set him on fire, and he just keeps reversing anyway. Not sure why. So he's taken down, what have we put up to? 21 damaging shots, although a lot of that was from a fire. We've got a little bit of assisted as well. But I um yeah, I really wanted to bring you these games. I've had it's been so much fun to to drive this tank. It might look like a bit of a a bit of a noob stomp on this one, but it's just been really, really fun. I think the probably the most fun I've had on the line since the VK36H. In my mind it's kind of feels like 
a tier 9 VK36H. Not some, not in like, I don't know, kind of stats and stuff, but just in terms of, it, like, the VK36H, when I was rolling with that at tier 6, it just felt, like, pretty much unstoppable almost all of the time. <laughs> like, and well, unless you were maybe two tiers down, which you could be, which you can't be in this. It just felt pretty much unstoppable. People bounce on you all day long and you can just sit there and shoot them. And the E75 feels the same. It's everything I wanted the Tiger 2 to be and it wasn't, you know. Here we go, 5k damage. We got uh, first class Master Eagle, Confederate Medal, Sniper, High Calibre, 1861 base. I think that's pretty close to a Mastery. I think the low 1900s on, uh, on PS4 will get you the Mastery. And 2.5k blocks, which is probably quite a low amount blocked for um, a lot of the games I've, I've had in the E75. So let's jump into game number two. So here we are on match number two. So yeah, to, to me it felt like it reminded me of the VK36H in that I could just drive towards the enemy, angle my tank nicely, and just absolutely tear them apart. Also this has the advantage, obviously it's higher tier, so you're not seal clubbing as much, you can put out higher damage potential, it, can, it has more the VK armor has weak spots on the front, which if people know for, know about, they can go for. This uh, doesn't really have too many. I mean, you can go for the hatch. The lower plate, obviously, is a more vulnerable area, but it's still tough as hell. And anyone who's played higher tier games in World of Tanks knows that pending the lower plate of an E75 is not always a guaranteed thing, depending on what you're driving. So it's been really, really fun. Definitely more fun. The, the Tiger II, you look at it and you're like, oh yeah, look, that looks like a big, tough armor tank with a big gun. But it's kind of not. It's just a big tank with a big gun. Um, and it just gets penned all the time. It can side scrape okay. It can, I guess it can side scrape pretty well. But but it's just, its armor is just absolutely nothing compared to this thing. Absolutely nothing. It makes, it, makes the Tiger II feel like a medium tank in terms of armor. Like, it's just ridiculous. So that's been really fun. I, I really enjoyed the playstyle of the VK where I was just kind of just a hard bastard, you know. You just drive around and just piss people off. They just can't pen you. I had someone, I think, no, it's not one of these games. Someone sent me a rage mail moaning that he was like, oh, it's easy when I can't damage you. And I'm not really sure what that was meant to say. He was in an E75 as well and I just tore him apart. And, you know, they're, um, they're tough machines to damage. So we're on Westfield, we decided to push up here, it felt like the right place to go. And plus I saw um, a guy with a game tag like that, and that makes me want to shoot you for having a hilariously stupid game tag. So shout out to uh, Ghetto Bang Bang. <laughs> there we go, rip, Ghetto Bang Bang. It's nice being able to play really aggressively front line. Um, very, very enjoyable. It's also quite maneuverable, really. It's a pretty quick tank, considering how good its armor is. Most of the tanks in the game that have that are known for their very strong armor, stuff like the 100 or um, or the mouse if you go even crazier or the T95 or whatever. Have a bit of a reputation for being pretty slow but this thing moves around pretty nice. I think it's a little bit slower when you have the top gun. I don't know if that's just my imagination but it felt like it was a tiny bit slower once I'd um, put the top gun on which kind of makes sense. It's a bigger gun but no, I might be wrong on that. There you go, 704 showed himself. We're watching out for him. I'm just being cautious and keeping an eye out for that guy because the 704 has got the big gun here. The Conqueror, not so much of a worry. Plus he's shot into the ground twice, so <laughs> he's either panicking or he's uh, he's maybe not that great. So we'll keep pushing on. We've got a whole bunch of guys here. Just trying to sort out that angle. There we go. He managed to just put one in me, which must have gone in through my lower plate. I don't think there's anywhere else that could have gone through there. And we can just keep happen away. Some of the games I've had in this thing, it's just obscene. I think one of these I end up finishing it on full health and, oh, Amorak, nice. It just gets, when you look at the end of the game at the amount of damage you've done, the amount of pens you've done and the amount of pens you took, it's just crazy sometimes. There we go, there's the 704. Try and ram him to track him. Doesn't quite end up working out. Doesn't get tracked. Uh, he derps his shot. I derp mine. But thankfully, he doesn't bother turning around. He's looking at those guys. So I put one into him and turn over around here, assuming my teammates will kill him. Um, and then he actually kills that guy. So I need to finish the job myself. There we go. 
and we can turn our attention to the other guys. Now up here, we saw we got an e we're pretty even teams at the moment. They got a full health E75. He may well be fully upgraded. He may be a very good player. Who knows? They've got the RU, and I think there's a Tiger 2 knocking around somewhere as well on the, my left, who's maybe not spotted yet. He'll pop up very soon. There he is. So at this stage, so I've seen him pop up, and he's tagged, he bounces there, puts one into tracks, but decide to push on this guy. This E75, definitely the biggest threat. How about this? Boom. There we go. That's how you deal with an RU. And an enemy 75 at the same time. But I realise there's that guy shooting me, but decide to keep focusing on the E75 and just turn myself around. There we go. And then we can switch our focus to this guy. Deal with the... Got to deal with the most dangerous threat first of all. I'm, I'd happily sit here and take on two Tiger 2s at the same time rather than take on one E75 in this thing. So, yeah, it wasn't too much of a worry. And, uh, and he actually wasn't able to do too much even with me driving completely away from him. So we give him a little love nudge as well, just to try and track him, slow him down. Doesn't really work, so just keep shooting. And just try and keep myself angled towards him. Another tip that people, someone told me in one of our earlier videos, thank you, thank you to whoever it was, um, which I don't do all the time, but especially not particularly against this guy, but I've been doing it a lot more, or at least trying to, is not aiming directly at enemy tanks in between your shots, so they can't hit flat spots on the front of your turret cheeks so if you angle your if your turret isn't if your gun's not pointing straight at them then there'll be a bit more angle to your turret armor and it'll help with bouncing and stuff like that so especially important stuff like the mouse is a classic one for it the mouse that's a classic spot to pen the mouse is those turret cheeks when it's looking straight at you is the easiest time to do it if it's looking 45 degrees not so easy there you go that's the end of this one it's not, i don't really manage to get anything else for the rest of this so we'll just uh we'll spin on to the battle results there we go, another 5,000 damage, another 1,600 blocks, a little bit less than last time, and another high caliber, and another first class mastery. Making a pretty decent amount of silver in this thing as well. I managed to get through, like I said, I got through 40,000 XP in an afternoon. There were a few ops with that, but nothing too crazy. I think there was, um, there was a tracking op that gave maybe 5,000 XP by getting it twice, and one other one that gave out about 2,000, but, um, but yeah, pretty... Pretty respectable. Anyway, let's jump on to the third and final replay of today's video. So, here we are with our third replay from our E75 extravaganza. And we're on Ensk this time. And we're going to have a good old ruck. So, I think it's... I think it's been my favourite one to grind from. The, the Tiger was also very fun. The Tiger 2 is certainly my least favourite. Uh, it's not to say it's an awful tank, but it didn't... It, the Tiger was really fun because of its crazy DPM um, and its manoeuvrability, I guess. And you could kind of side scrape to an extent in it with some, with some sneaky driving. The VK was just an absolute beast at its tier. This thing is just, is just everything. It's got a great gun. It's mobile. It's got incredible armour. Um, and it's tier 9, which is a really nice tier to be because you're never two tiers down But you don't always have to have horrific tier 10 TDs on your team like you do if you're in a tier 10 tank So I really like tier 9. It's a good tank to uh, it's a good tier to be at so poor old black prince on the enemy team Go for the tracking shot. He's not gonna have a good time Still keep shuffling in and out in case he somehow manages to hit my hatch Maybe the premature might go through probably not um, or if there's someone else aiming in on me who I'm not paying attention to. Always worth shuffling around if you can afford it, just to throw off someone who might be aiming in for that ultra easy shot. You don't want to help them out. There we go. Managed to take down poor old Black Prince. Just have a quick look, see if there's a shot on through there. There is not, so we'll spin it around. Medium tank taken down before we can get a hit on him. It looks like... Yeah, so I think what I'm going to do, this T-34-2 looks like he's engaging that medium on my team, so I want to drive around here, get behind him, and kill him, but my team do the business before I can. So we end up pushing, and this is what you can do so well in the 75 is just roll through teams. You just absolutely swamp them. And now we've got we've got two E-75s up here. We go put a hit into the Tiger. Another one finishes him off. Enemy artillery spotted. Aim is shown to him. 
that guy decides to drive into the back of me, but manages to finish him off. Another, another partially aimed, uh, aimed in shot on the motherland, but we had to fire that one because he was going to get around the corner. So nice little easy one. And we've absolutely ruined their team. We're three, three minutes in, well, two and a half minutes in. I haven't lost any health yet. We've got eight damaging shots away. I'm um, already round behind the enemy coming in to flank them. So we've got enemy 75 shots not quite on at the moment. What else have we got? Enemy Yag Tiger. There we go. Okay. Easy shot into the engine, but go for the tracking shot. We don't want him to spin around and shoot us. And I'm happily taking... There was also an op on... I think this was during... Yeah, one of the ops that gave you a bit of extra XP was for tracking assisted damage. So that's why I was uh, maybe tracking people a bit more than I normally would. Like this one, for instance. I probably wouldn't have bothered tracking him um, in, in a normal situation. But, you know... Screw it, why not? He's still trying to peg me. He's see this is you can nice example here of an unangled E75 lower plate and an angled E75 lower plate. And this is firing normal AP shells with the 105 as well. No no APCR. Just going straight through with normal AP, because he's nice and flat. So there we go, we're up to a nice bit of damage. We've got a nice bit of assisted as well. Doesn't look like the caps are real threat because we can get there nice and quick, even though they've got a few tanks up there, but they wouldn't be able to cap that out before we got there and um, and started shooting them. Here comes that motherland again. We get another <laughs> fairly lucky shot on him. And what's he going to do? He's just going to keep driving out in front of the 75 Put one more into him. And leaves him there for the cleaners. I think about the ram, realise I'm just going to get close up and use the angle to shoot down on him cleanly. So we just put the finishing shot into him. Nice little shot into the side of this E75's turret. And what's he up to? He's just going to sit there. Even, and... Oh, we dump that one into the dirt. And someone else gets the kill. But we got a nice chunk of damage on him. And that's what counts. So almost all of the enemy team mopped up. There's just one TD left. Where could he be? It's a T95. That's where he is, at the spawn. I'm not quite sure how he managed to go unspotted for quite so long. Um, but he does. And we actually managed to drive all the way back there and get there before he dies. And it's a nice little, um, nice little fail moment from our team's E75, really, because... I didn't expect, I thought this T95 would be long dead. I thought he'd get tracked by the E75. He'd drive around behind him. Bish, bash, bosh. Fanny's your uncle. Fanny's your uncle? Sure, Fanny's your uncle. We live in progressive times. <laughs> Fanny's your aunt. Bob's your uncle. But instead, the E75 gets ruined. Uh, he just sits in front of him, trying to face hug it by the look of it, which didn't seem like the best idea. But you know, each to their own, however you want to do it. I decided to uh, to track him and drive around the side, which seemed like a much better option. And we'll keep putting the tracking shots in as well, because we'll damage him and we'll keep him tracked. So if anyone else shoots him, we'll get assist. And he's not going to be able to turn around and shoot me with that big gun of his. Not that it matters, because we are still on full hit points. We've done 17 damaging shots, 12 tracking assists, 3 kills didn't lose a hit point. Ridiculous. Utterly ridiculous tank. I don't know how people don't sit here moaning about this tank being OP. It's just outrageous. I don't know. It, it feels like, I don't know, it feels like the most OP tier 9 tank I've played. I don't know if, well, maybe the word OP is overused, you know. It's just, it's a good tank. If you're, it's not going to make you get amazing rounds if you're a bad player, but, but it's a very, very good tank. And I love it. It's really rekindled my interest for the game at the moment and really made me uh, want to play it. So that's good. It's also stat padded the hell out of my PS4 account. My PS4 stats are looking just frankly ridiculous. It's obviously a complete re-roll account because I played console on Xbox for, what, two years, two and a half years before PlayStation came out. And then I got a PlayStation, started playing on there as well. So I've had only seven, eight hundred games. Obviously, I went through the, the slog of learning to play the game on Xbox. But um, but yeah, I think on the Sunday that I sat grinding 40k XP on this, I think I came out of that with like 4,000 WN8, which is which is pretty ridiculous for um, for a high-tier vehicle over that many games. 
So yeah, they're chuffed. I'm definitely going to go three marks on this. I don't think it'll be difficult at all. And then we'll be on to the 100 and we will see how we can go about three marking that baby. I'm not sure if it's going to be difficult or not. Let me know if um, maybe any of you guys have three marks the 100 in the comments and uh, let me know how difficult that was. Nice one. All right. Well, thanks for watching, everyone. Hope you enjoyed that triple whammy of E75 videos. And I hope you're looking forward to seeing the Top Gun, which I've unlocked. And I've already had a beast game, much better than any of these, that is uh, going to be coming to you guys very, very soon. Nice one. All right. Well, thanks for watching. Happy Banjo, everyone. And I'll see you next time. Bye. Mm -hmm.